When a Chinese private enterprise announced the development of a hypersonic missile, priced at 700,000 yuan, did you ever imagine that the economic rules of warfare had been completely rewritten? This is the topic currently dominating military circles. The YKJ-1000 hypersonic missile unveiled by Lingkong Tiangxing Technology Co. Limited, while its absolute performance may fall slightly short of the nation's flagship Dongfeng series, its speed of Mach 5-7, range of 1,300 kilometers, an astonishingly low price tag of 700,000 yuan are dropping a depth charge into the global military strategic balance. This is not merely the emergence of a new weapon, it heralds the birth of an entirely new philosophy of warfare, when cutting-edge technology meets extreme cost control. How will it reshape the balance of victory on future battlefields? The cost control approach behind this missile exemplifies the pinnacle of Chinese industrial ingenuity. It completely abandons the expensive high-end materials traditionally used in military manufacturing, instead boldly adopting readily available industrial products and automotive-grade components from the civilian market. The most astonishing innovation lies in the warhead's heat shield. Instead of expensive specialized high-temperature coatings, the R&D team ingeniously set the speed threshold at Mach 7. They then pioneered the use of construction cement blended with modified materials to solve the high temperature protection challenge. This leap from construction sites to missile warheads exemplifies China's industrial system's ability to swiftly convert civilian production capacity into military capability. In manufacturing processes, Lingkong Tiangxing achieved equally disruptive breakthroughs. They introduced mature integrated die casting technology from the new energy vehicle industry into missile production, enabling missile structural components to be rapidly mass produced like automotive parts. This reduced the unit cost of producing 10,000 structural components to just 3,200 yuan lower than the replacement cost of die-cast parts in many household new energy vehicles. This technological path was no accident. It embodies China's manufacturing sector's unique ability to fuse cross-industry capabilities. In Dongwen's die-casting factories, the same machinery produces automotive components by day and, after switching molds at night, manufactures missile casings, a production flexibility unimaginable for traditional defense contractors. Camera modules for missiles are sourced directly from Taobao at just 180 yuan each. The navigation components, Baidu chips, fiber optic gyroscopes, and IMU chips are all mature products commonly found in civilian consumer grade drones, easily procured in bulk. Even the explosive separation nut, traditionally costly, time-consuming to produce, and subject to strict qualification controls and conventional missiles, has been replaced with an easily detectable electric separation nut capable of mass production at 10,000 units per month, driving costs down to 2,000 yuan. The strategic value of the YKJ-1000 stems precisely from this cost asymmetry advantage enabled by its breathtakingly low price. Let's do the math. The U.S. Navy's Tomahawk cruise missile, a subsonic weapon vulnerable to interception, carries a unit cost of approximately $1.3 million. The YKJ-1000, vastly outperforming the Tomahawk, costs only about one-tenth of that price. This means a budget that previously could only purchase one rocket with no precision guidance and a range not exceeding 300 kilometers can now acquire a hypersonic missile capable of precision strikes with a range exceeding 1,000 kilometers. What was once dismissed as online banter about hypersonic carpet bombing, has become a viable tactical option with the emergence of the YKJ-1000. Imagine future Taiwan Strait conflict scenarios, where wave after wave of YKJ-1000s descend upon target areas like locusts. Even if defense systems intercept most, inevitable slip-throughs will strike critical targets. This relentless missile barrage would inflict devastating psychological pressure and resource depletion on defenders. What truly traps adversaries in an unsolvable dilemma is the intercept equation. The U.S. Navy's primary carrier-based anti-missile system, the standard six interceptor, carries a unit cost of nearly 30 million yuan. Using it to intercept a YKJ-1000, costing only 700,000 yuan is akin to crashing a Ferrari into a bicycle. The cost of a single interceptor launched by the defense could fund the production of over 40 hypersonic missiles for the attacker. In actual combat, if the enemy chooses to intercept, its military budget reserves will rapidly deplete under such extreme disproportionate expenditure. If it chooses not to intercept, even if the accuracy of the YKJ-1000 is questionable, no one would dare gamble that it won't hit high-value targets. Moreover, within a dense barrage of low-cost missiles, high-end missiles like the DF-17 could easily be mixed in, exponentially increasing the decision-making difficulty and risk for the defending side. This dilemma has already played out in the Middle East, the US, 
Navy has expended staggering quantities of expensive standard series interceptor missiles intercepting Houthi and Iranian missiles, pushing its missile industrial base to the brink of an inability to rapidly replenish stocks. In a hypothetical conflict in the Western Pacific, the scale of such consumption would grow exponentially. U.S. bases in Guam and aircraft carrier strike groups patrolling the South China Sea would face unprecedented threats of missile saturation attacks. No rational commander would willingly expend multi-million dollar interceptors against an endless stream of cheap targets, yet this very dilemma is the ingenious design intent behind the YKJ-1000. The emergence of the YJK-1000 is not a random technological spark, but an inevitable product of China's industrialization process and the development of its military civil fusion strategy reaching a specific stage. It reveals a fundamental shift. High-end weapons technology is transforming from a state-exclusive, precision-engineered ritual into a universal tool leveraging the innovation and manufacturing capabilities of the entire society. The migration of core talents like founder Wang Yudong, formerly from state-level research institutes, to private enterprises signals the spillover of cutting-edge defense technologies into the broader economy. When rocket scientists meet die-casting experts, an aerospace design merges with civilian supply chains, an innovation plus manufacturing cycle emerges that defies conventions and transcends traditional barriers. Supported by this system, private enterprises are profoundly reshaping China's defense industry ecosystem through their advantages of efficient decision-making and cost control. Notably, Ling Kong Tiangsing is not an isolated case. Dozens of similar private aerospace companies are thriving across China, achieving breakthroughs in specialized fields like rocket engines, composite materials, and navigation control. These enterprises compete and collaborate, forming a dynamic innovation ecosystem. All this is made possible by China's comprehensive industrial system and unparalleled supply chain advantages. From Shenzhen's electronics markets to Zijiang's mold factories, from Jiangsu's materials laboratories to Shandong's precision machining clusters, China's entire manufacturing sector serves as the technological and production backbone for these innovative enterprises. This 700,000 yuan missile, with its unmatched cost advantage, is redefining the rules of modern warfare. It signifies that future battlefield confrontations will no longer be solely contests of cutting-edge technology but comprehensive showdowns of industrial system completeness, supply chain resilience, and cost control capabilities. Facing this industrial kthalhu we have built, one where cost and efficiency are highly unified, adversaries will confront an unsolvable arithmetic problem and a desperate war of attrition. Imagine a battlefield requiring a thousand missiles for saturation strikes. A traditional military industrial complex would need years, and tens of billions of dollars, but enterprises leveraging China's civilian manufacturing network could mobilize the capacity of just a few industrial parks to complete the task within months, at a total cost potentially less than one-tenth of the conventional approach. The Ling Kong Tiangsing and YKJ-1000, like the first tentacle gently extended, deliver a firm yet subtle warning to all potential adversaries. You'd better not force me to deploy this production capacity for such purposes. And this is merely the beginning. As technologies like 3D printing, AI-driven design, and smart manufacturing become more widespread, the cost and efficiency of weapons production will undergo revolutionary changes. In the future, we may witness hypersonic missiles priced at 300,000 yuan, or cruise missiles costing 100,000 yuan, further rewriting the economics of warfare. In the foreseeable future, China's unique manufacturing advantages combined with technological innovation will continue to spawn more game-changing weapons like the YKJ-1000.